The show begins with a futuristic interstellar spaceship, Avalon, making its way from Earth to a colony world called Homestead 2. The ship is currently on autopilot. There are a total of 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers on board. All of them are in hibernation. The ship is shown flying into a hail of asteroids with a projected energy shield at the front absorbing all the hits. However, a particularly large asteroid was in its way and the ship collides into it, smashing it into pieces but also taking some damage. All of the damaged utilities are automatically repaired except for a single hibernation pod. Due to the damage, the pod malfunctions and starts waking up its inhabitant, Jim, who is a mechanical engineer. He is greeted by an AI on a projected screen. Apparently, he's been in hibernation for 120 years. He will be able to enjoy four more months of space travel in total luxury. Jim makes his way through a sleek corridor into his cabin, which looks basic. He's told that he'll be assigned to a learning group to help him adapt to the new colonial world. Jim cleans up and gets ready to meet other passengers. He heads to the auditorium for his learning group session but finds no one else there. Jim asks where the others are but is repeatedly told that the other passengers are simply on the ship with him. He starts to worry and goes around the ship looking for people. Jim reaches the grand concourse and asks to see a real person. He's directed to see the steward who handles passenger affairs, but finds the chair empty. He asks to see the captain instead and is directed to the bridge. Jim tries to get into the bridge but it requires special authorization. Next. He goes to the observatory and asks about the ship's current location. The AI shockingly reveals that they're still 90 years away from Homestead 2, having only left Earth 30 years ago. Jim was simply woken up 90 years too early. Jim then goes to send a message, explaining his situation, to the Homestead company back on Earth and asks for help. After clicking send, he's told that he'll get a reply in 55 years. Feeling dejected, he walks back to the Grand Concourse and to his surprise, he sees a bartender, cleaning glasses. The bartender greets him and he becomes relieved, thinking he's not the only one awake on the ship. Shortly however, he realizes the bartender was just an android called Arthur. The next day, Jim goes to the cafeteria but finds that all the fancy drinks are reserved only for gold-class passengers. He simply ends up getting, a large coffee. Jim then looks around the ship and finds an operating manual on hibernation pods. Using the manual and other tools, he attempts to repair his pod. At first, it powers up and Jim climbs into it but finds that it doesn't put him back to sleep. Jim heads back to the bridge where the crew pods are located, and tries breaking into it but isn't successful. Soon, the ship begins to show signs of malfunction. Jim goes to the bar to have a drink and chats with Arthur. The bartender tells him not to worry about where he'd rather be and just enjoy life where he is right now. Upon hearing this, Jim breaks into the Vienna Suite, a premier cabin which is much more luxurious than the one he's staying at. He also starts having fun by playing some basketball, then going to a high-end Japanese restaurant. He also plays some dance-off game and watches a movie at the theater. In the next scene, Jim can be seen with a beard. Presumably, some time have passed. He still continues on his joyful spree but loses interest after a while. He slowly falls into a decrepit condition. One day, in his drunken state, Jim puts on a space suit and walks out of the ship. With a tether on his back, he jumps off the ship and spends a moment just floating about in space. As he heads back into the ship, a suicidal idea gets into his head. He walks into the airlock without a space suit on and considers opening the airlock door to kill himself. However, he changes his mind and begins to run out in panic, slipping on a bottle of drink he had discarded earlier. He gets up and finds himself in the hibernation chamber where the other passengers are in their pods. He sees a beautiful woman called Aurora, who's a writer, in her pod. He searches through the passenger profiles to find out more about Aurora. After watching her interviews, Jim starts to fall for her and considers taking her out of hibernation to join him. He consults Arthur but realizes that Arthur is just a machine and won't be able to understand human feelings. Jim tries hard to convince himself not to do it but he gives in finally. He cuts his hair and shaves himself before tampering with her machine. Just as Aurora is waking up from hibernation, he dashes back to his room. After settling down, he heads to the concourse to find Aurora walking about looking for people. He greets her and she asks about their predicament. He brings her around the ship and explains that they're awake much earlier than they were supposed to. Aurora begins to panic and wants to get back to hibernate in her pod but Jim tells her it's impossible because they simply don't have the tools and facilities to do it. After a while, she decides to get some rest in her cabin because she's exhausted. Jim heads to the bar to have a drink and talks to Arthur, who congratulates him. Jim then asks Arthur to keep it a secret, and that Jim will tell Aurora about the truth eventually. The next morning, Aurora asks the concourse AI about hibernation pods but it keeps insisting that the pods are failsafe. Jim meets Aurora and they head to breakfast together. Right after they leave, 
the AI malfunctions and shuts down. The ship also starts experiencing various other critical errors. At the cafeteria, Aurora is seen having a gold-class breakfast and notices Jim having only a simple-looking breakfast. Jim says that he's not a gold-class passenger. Aurora then insists on getting him the same breakfast as her, and he digs right into it. Aurora suggests methods they can use to put themselves back into hibernation but Jim tells her that he has tried everything. Feeling frustrated, Aurora goes off to try them herself, but isn't successful. At the concourse, Jim notices a cleaning machine malfunctioning, repeatedly running itself into the wall. A week goes by, Aurora starts an audio log about her situation. She also exercises by jogging and swimming. One day, she asks Jim why he has left Earth, knowing that he'll never see his friends or family again. He says that people don't need him there anymore, and he wants to help build a new world and start a new life. As for Aurora, she had planned to live in the new planet for just a year before going back to Earth. But because of the long journeys both ways, she'd essentially be able to live 250 years in the future. Also, she'd have a great story to tell. Next, Aurora asks Jim if there's anything fun to do on the ship. Jim brings her around the ship doing all the stuff he's done before like the dance-off, basketball and movie theater. They end up at the bar, where Aurora leaves to bed after a while. Arthur then tells Jim that she's wonderful and that Jim's made an excellent choice, leaving him guilt-ridden. Jim builds a miniature model of the Chrysler building for her because she has reminisced about it before during their talks. Jim also modifies a cleaning robot that has malfunctioned and uses it to hand Aurora a message asking her on a dinner date. Later, Jim meets her at her place and they head to the bar and the restaurant. After that, they go for a spacewalk together and leap off the edge of the ship, just as Jim had done by himself some time ago. When they got back, they kissed and end up sleeping together. They start living together as a couple. Jim explores the ship further and finds hibernating animals and plant nurseries where he gets a rose for Aurora. One day, Jim and Aurora rushes to the observatory to witness the slingshot of the ship around a red giant star. Also, it turns out that it is Aurora's birthday so they celebrate it together with Arthur. During their conversation, Aurora casually mentions that there are no secrets between Jim and her, and Jim agrees. Jim then takes his leave to the bathroom. Arthur tells Aurora that Jim has been looking forward to meeting her since a year ago and had spent months deciding whether to wake her up. Jim comes back at that very moment, and Aurora confronts him about it. Jim owns up to it and Aurora gets a panic attack. She heads back to their room and starts smashing things. Jim is seen sitting in the concourse holding a ring. He was about to propose to her before everything went wrong. He heads back to their room to find that Aurora had packed up her things and left. The next morning, he walks into the cafeteria to talk to Aurora but she leaves immediately after seeing him. At night, Jim wakes up to find Aurora standing over him. She starts punching and kicking him. Then, she grabs a long metal object and right as she is about swing it down at him, she stops. Jim opens up his defensive posture as if to let her know that he deserves being hit. She starts to sob and throws the object away angrily, before leaving the room. One day, as Aurora is out jogging, she hears Jim talking to her over the PA system. He expresses his love for her and his regret but she accuses him of taking away her life. In the next scene, a power surge happens. Jim goes down to the bar to find Arthur but sees Aurora there. Apparently, they take turns with Arthur to avoid meeting each other. One day, Aurora sees a tree, planted by Jim, in the middle of the concourse. Later, Jim is taking an elevator when it suddenly breaks down. The food vending machine also breaks down as Aurora is ordering her breakfast from it. Right at that moment, a voice over the PA identifies himself as Gus, who's the ship's captain. Jim and Aurora both rush to the concourse to find Gus there. He asks if anyone else is awake and how far are they from the destination. Then, Gus brings them into the bridge. Gus tries to find out what's wrong but there's no data present in the diagnostics. Gus doesn't feel well but he blames it on hibernation hangover. Just as they were heading into the concourse, a robot falls down almost directly on them. Jim and Aurora mention that many robots and facilities have been malfunctioning. Gus tasks them with finding out what else is breaking down while he checks out what's wrong with their hibernation pods. Later, Jim finds Gus at their pods. Gus knows what the problems are, including the fact that Jim had tampered with Aurora's pod to wake her up. Jim admits to it and Gus thinks what Jim did was wrong. Back at the bridge, Gus seems to be getting sicker so he goes to take a rest in his room. In his room, Gus starts coughing up blood. That night itself, Aurora couldn't sleep so she takes a swim in the pool. The ship suffers another power surge, but this time, it loses the gravity function. Without gravity, the water in the pool starts floating into the air and Aurora is stuck inside the water. She tries to escape but she becomes submerged over and over again. Shortly after, Gravity turns back on and she manages to climb out. Jim notices the same gravity loss while sleeping but he just falls off the bed. Jim and Aurora wake Gus up, who checks the ship's log. The first ever power surge, which woke Jim up from hibernation, 
also damaged a major system. The rest of the ship had to bear the extra load, which caused the rest of the system failures over time. Later, Gus loses consciousness and they bring him to the infirmary's auto dock. The scan shows that he has over 600 disorders due to the damage caused while he was forcibly woken up from his hibernation. The auto dock reveals that he only has a few hours left to live and prescribes him some sedatives. Before dying, Gus gives his ID to Jim and asks him to fix the ship. Power surges are becoming more frequent now. On their way to engineering, Jim and Aurora see that Arthur is also breaking down and causing damage to himself. Jim quickly hops over the counter and pulls out his chip, turning him off, before any further damage happens. At the main engineering room, Jim and Aurora find the power plant, which they couldn't access even with Gus's card. Jim opens the door manually, but Aurora gets sucked into the room. It turns out there's a breach in the ground caused by a meteoroid and everything's being pulled out through it. Together, Aurora and Jim manage to seal off the breach. They trace the breach that leads to the damaged reactor, which is on fire. Jim fixes the reactor controls but is unable to vent the fire because the reactor's outer door is jammed. The only way to fix the outer door is from outside the ship. Jim gets a heat shield and puts on a spacesuit. Just before Jim leaves, Aurora tells him to come back to her because she can't live on the ship without him. Jim leaves the ship and climbs up towards the vent. In the reactor control room, splinters of metal are ricocheting around the room and one of them pierces Aurora in her arm. She pulls it out in pain and wraps up her wound. Jim reaches the vent's outer door. However, it turns out that the door doesn't stay open, so he has to be there to keep it open. Jim turns on his boot magnet and holds the heat shield up. At first, Aurora refuses to open the inner door because Jim could die from the fire blast. But, he reminds her that there are 5,000 other people on the ship. After some contemplation, she pulls the lever which causes the fire to vent towards Jim. Jim holds on as long as he can, but his boots give way and he gets pushed out. Jim has a tether but the force that pushed him out is too strong and the tether snaps. Jim is seen floating slowly towards the ship's exhaust. He throws the heat shield at it to create an opposing force, pushing him away. He tells Aurora that he can't get back to the ship because his tether broke. Aurora rushes to the ship's exit just as Jim runs out of oxygen. He tells her he's sorry as he passes out. Aurora puts on a spacesuit and jumps out towards Jim. Her tether isn't long enough but she manages to grab onto Jim's broken tether and pulls him towards her. She pulls him back into the ship and into the auto dock in the infirmary. The auto dock proclaims that Jim is dead but Aurora tells it to resuscitate him, using Gus's ID to authorize the procedure. After a while, he is successfully revived. In the next scene, Aurora is seen fixing up Arthur, who thanks her. Jim and Aurora send Gus's body into space. Then, Jim tells Aurora that he has discovered something about the auto dock. It turns out that the auto dock has a command called stabilize and suspend, which stops all metabolic activity of its inhabitant, essentially putting the inhabitant back into hibernation. However, there's only one auto dock on the ship. Jim offers it to Aurora, but she rejects it. In the following scene, Jim proposes to Aurora at the bar. Jim and Aurora are seen taking a swim in the pool, together this time, enjoying the view of space. 88 years later, the ship is seen almost reaching Homestead too. The crew members are the first to wake up and they are stunned as they walk into the concourse, which has been transformed by Jim and Aurora into a paradise of nature. Aurora has left an audio log that tells the story of the life she and Jim had on the ship. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like.